Okay, in this exercise, um, you asked to um, basically work your way around a um, Brayton cycle, thermodynamic cycle. So you're told the cycle has a pressure ratio of 8, and you were told the inlet um, temperature to the compressor and the turbine, respectively. And you're told assuming air standard assumptions to calculate the exit temperature, the compressor and turbine, respectively, the bar work ratio for the whole cycle, and the thermal efficiency. And obviously stay any assumptions that you make okay so how to go about this well again draw a sketch um help visualize the problem see what you're doing um so this is bright brayton cycle here um if you write down like um you did for the auto cycle um a little table so you've got your points one two three four your pressures and your temperature that's up here you were told the inlet temperature to the um compressor which is point one and the inlet temperature to the turbine, which is 0.3. Um, now, you weren't told what the pressures were, but you do know their pressure ratio. So it doesn't really matter. As I say, they're in ratios, so let's just call them 1 and 8 and 8 and 1. Okay. Um, and you were asked to find the exit temperatures and also the backward ratio and the thermal efficiency. So we're going to assume, obviously, it's working on the air standard cycle um, with room temperature properties. Um, and everything is steady state. So the um, gas temperature, the exit, the compressor, by recognizing that this is a polytropic process. Now we don't know anything about the volume, so we need to use the temperature uh, pressure uh, relationship here, uh, which is this. And we know obviously T1, uh, we know that this ratio, P2, P1, and we can get gamma from the steam tables. Um, so taking it as 1.4, and plugging all those numbers in, we end up with our the exit temperature at the compressor is 543 Kelvin, um, which is easy enough. So put that in our table. Um, the gas temperature at the exit of the turbine can be um, calculated using the same uh, function, um, but this time, um, instead of it being a pressure ratio of 8, because you're going from 1 to 2, you're going from 3 to 4, so it's uh, 1 over 8. Um, so the um, temperature um, that you calculated, if you put in all the values, should have been 718 Kelvin. And one thing here, actually, another good kind of mental check is if you're um, bit, get a bit confused about which way these pressure ratios should be, just think about it. If you if you um, if you had the opposite these the opposite way around, this value would be larger than this value, and you'd look at your plot and think, well, that doesn't make sense. It can't increase in temperature as it's going through the turbine. It must decrease in temperature. So you should always be doing this in an exam. You should always be doing a mental check on your final solutions. You know, does this make sense? Could this physically happen? This temperature is lower than this temperature. Check. That's, that, that's gone in the right direction. Okay, so that was the second part of the question, to find the gas temperature of the exit of the turbine. Um, then you asked to find the back work ratio. Now the back work ratio is, as kind of the name suggests, it's the amount of work that's kind of put back into the system. So it's the um, the work that's put into the compressor divided by the um, work that's done by the turbine or by the system. So the work you put in over the work that you get out. So obviously we have to calculate these, and the way that you calculate these is from the change in enthalpy. So the work done is equal to the change in enthalpy, which um, the change in enthalpy is equal to Cp delta T. So for the um, work that's um, uh, going into the compressor, um, into the system and through the compressor, is um, Cp delta T um, between 1 and 2. And this CP um, got from the steam tables. Um, so for uh, the same set of conditions we're using, it's 1.005 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Ch times that by the delta T's we got from our table, and we get a value of 244 uh, kilojoules per kilogram. Um, the work from the turbine, or what's coming out of our system, we find exactly the same way. It's a change in enthalpy, which is equal to CP delta T. So plug in CP in our temperatures, and we end up with um, 585 uh, kilojoules per um, kilogram. 
So now we've got our um, work in and work out. So we can simply divide one by the other and it comes out at 42%, which is quite high when you think about it. So think about what that's telling us is that 40% of the work that's coming out of the um, that's been generated by the turbine is that it's the, the gases are spinning around. 42% of that energy is going back into the system to compress the air to go in. So it's quite a large amount, almost half really, um, of what's going in. So that's what that's telling us. Then the last part of the question was to find the thermal efficiency, which we know is the network that's done over the heat that we have to supply. The heat that we um, supply is um, is a constant, is an isobaric constant pressure process. So we need to use Cp. So Q in is Cp delta T. Uh, we already know what Cp is. We've been using that. So we use um, T2 and uh, T3. Plug those values in and we get 760 kilojoules per kilogram. From the previous slide, we know we can work out W net because we already know what W out and W in are. We work those out. So by finding the difference of those, we get 340 kilojoules per uh, kilogram. Then the efficiency is simply those um, W net divided by Q in, which gives us 45% approximately um, as a thermal efficiency. And remember, just as a check, you could always check that with that relationship that we der derived uh, during the lecture.